lesson us right now. He is he's lesson us four. I'm going to go so we'll look at that Psalm number 121. Psalm number 121. We'll be reading from the New King James Version. Psalm number 121. Psalm number 121. In the Old Testament, we'll look at Psalm number 121. Yeah, the Lord is. He's blessing us. He's blessing us right now. Can you testify this morning that he's blessing you? He's blessing you. Can you testify that he has been blessing you? Can you testify that he's blessing you right now? Can you walk in faith and believe that he's going to bless you in the near future? Hallelujah. Psalm number 121. When you found me with us, cover these words. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from which comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Yes, Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is my keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in yes, sir. from this time forth and forever more. Father God, we thank you now. God, we thank you that you're blessing us. Oh, thank you, Lord. We thank you that you're keeping us thank you. right now. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we know that you are the one we ought to look to. When we ask the question, from which cometh our help, Lord, the answer is you, Lord. You, Lord, give us our help. You're the one who has made heaven and you made earth. Lord, you allow our foot or our feet to not move. You, Lord, you keep us and we know you will not slumber. Lord, we know that you don't slumber nor sleep. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us. Lord, you're the shade upon our right hand. Lord, you are you're the one who keeps the sun from smitting us and striking us. God, we thank you. We glorify you. We magnify you. We bless you, Father God, for you are good and you are God. Lord, you're the one who has preserved our soul. Lord, you bless us in our going out and our coming in. And for that, we just say, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we come to the house today just to say, Lord, we thank you. We've gathered here today to say, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we glorify you. We magnify you. We lift you, Father God, for you are worthy of all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. God, there's no God like you. There's no substance like you. There's no person like you. There's no thing like you. God, you are God and you're God alone. And we thank you now. Lord, we ask you to forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for messing up. Forgive us for not doing the things that are pleasing in your sight. Bless us, Lord, that nothing will come between you and us as we come to praise you, to worship you, to magnify you, to lift your Father. Now, Lord, we thank you for forgiving us and keeping us and blessing our minds and our hearts, Father God. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us in this place that we will forget about our troubles, forget about our needs, forget about our wants. And then we will lift our hands, we will do our dance to you, Father God. For God, you are worthy of all the praise. Bless us this morning, Father God, that we will walk with you, Father, that we will hear from you. We pray for the priest's word, we pray for the man of God, we pray for the preacher. We ask you, 
Father God, to let it down into the deep wells of knowledge that he will speak to us and that we will be made the better. Now, Lord, we thank you for the victory. We thank you for the victorious celebration this morning. We thank you for the victory, Father God, how you brought us and you kept us. We thank you for the victory, Father God, for what you're doing right now, Father. We, we thank you for putting the devil on the run. We, we ask you to bless us now. And Lord, we ask you to meet us in this place. We ask you to meet us even knowing that you're already here. We ask you to meet us, Father God, realizing that you are good and you are God. Now bless us to hear from you, Father, that, that old lives, old lives will be changed. That hope will be renewed. That strength will be developed. That our lives will be made the better. And Lord, we ask you to keep the glory. All the honor and all the praise. Allow us to be beneficiaries of your many blessings. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful, anointed name of Jesus Christ we pray and we ask it all. Amen. And thank God.
virgin with that marinade in your spirit. We've come to see him. We've come to see him. And he is the one who can open our eyes. Hallelujah. 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 We want to see him. We want to examine who he is. We want to express to him our love. We want to see him. Hallelujah to the Lord. Hallelujah. Why don't we thank God for who he is and what he's already done. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. He just keeps doing what he does. And he does it over and over and over again. And the good thing about it, he doesn't depend on us to get it done. He is God all by, all by himself. It is preaching time. It is time to hear from the Lord. It is preaching time. It is, it is time to hear from the Lord. It is time to hear from the Lord. Hallelujah. This week I had the privilege to honor the great opportunity to travel 2,000 miles through about seven or eight states. I really, really lost count. So through about seven to eight states, about 2,000 miles, arriving back at the house Wednesday night, about 1 a.m. while you were sleeping, slowing, and swallowing. Amen. I want to thank Brother Miles for having Bible study, for doing an excellent job and challenging us to do what God has called us to do. We have a preacher in the house. We have a preacher that's well equipped for preaching. He has come to us from the Holy Trinity Church where the great pastor is Pastor Richard Joel Rose in Houston, Texas. He has on his resume pastor himself. And so during this, this week, I asked him a long time ago, if I don't make it back, will you preach? And I also ask him, if I do make it back, will you preach? We, we have to always ask if we don't make it back, because we may have plans. <laughs> but God has other plans. And not only does God have other plans, the devil has other plans. Paul said, I, I wanted to be with you, the church at, at Thessalonica. I wanted to be with you, the church at Philippi. But the devil hindered it. So we can't take for granted that uh, we're going to be around where we think we're going to be at the appointed time. And for that reason, we understand that the ministry is bigger than us. And I want to welcome my brother to the New Beginning Church, Pastor Sammy Sivaran of the Holy Trinity Church. I want to welcome him. Why don't you join me and welcome him? He's a clean dresser, but he can preach. That's what he can preach. Why don't you welcome this, my brother? Good morning to you. How blessed we are of God to be in worship. Honor to God. Obedience to Him, to Jesus, our Lord and our Savior recognizing the presence and purpose of the Holy Spirit, respect to my friend and brother, uh, Dr. Matthew Davis, and to Sister Davis, God bless you, to all of the officers and members of this church, uh, to you, the New Beginning Church family, we salute you today as we honor God together. We certainly ask your prayers. I love you, Pastor. I always Love him ever since we've met and been working together through through various ministries. He's always been so dear to my heart. So we come on his behalf. Thank you, Pastor, for the invite uh, to come and to share with you. Uh, I know of you. I know his love for you. And we certainly uh, respect this opportunity um, that he has given us to come. There is a word we want to share with you, uh, found in Tuckley, uh, placed there in the second chapter of the Gospel of Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. 
That is an interesting word to my brother, a musician who we have met um, several times coming this way, and, and he's here working with the music and the instruments and prepping things before we come on Sundays. That's loyalty. Amen. Yes, we certainly honor that and thank God whenever we see your deacons and officers here throughout the week trying to make sure things are what they need to be um, for the people of God. When you get to that second chapter of the book of Mark, let me know. We want to pick up right there. Just say, I got it, preacher. Amen. We solicited a few people a few minutes ago uh, on the phone. Thank God for these phones Amen. that they are to be used for the right thing Amen. during work. Yes, because they can certainly be used the wrong way. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Everybody on their phone, not in church. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Some folk talking with people all over the world. Amen. That second chapter, there was an interesting pericope, an interesting story there we want you to see. Listen and look. And when he returned to Capernaum, after some days, it was reported that he was at home. And many were gathered together so that there was no more room, not even at the door. And he was preaching the word to them. And they came bringing to him a paralytic, paralytic uh, carried by four men. And when they could not get near him okay. because of the crowd, they removed the roof above okay. him. Right. And when they had made an opening, they let down the bed on which the paralytic man, uh, I mean the paralytic lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic man, son, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Now, some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their hearts, why does this man speak like that? He is blaspheming. Who can forgive sin but God alone? And immediately Jesus perceiving in his spirit that they thus questioned within themselves, he said to them, why do you question these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the parody, your sins are forgiven, or to say, rise, take up your bed and walk, but that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Amen. And said to the paralytic, I say to you, rise, pick up your bed, and go home. And he arose, he rose and immediately picked up his bed yes. and went out before them all, so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw anything like this. Amen. 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 I want to share with you from the thought, what happens when faith is full in the face of Jesus? Amen. What can happen when faith is full in the face of Jesus? My brothers and sisters, this second chapter of the book of Mark reveals to us that this is a frequent visit of Jesus. This is Jesus' visit to Capernaum, a familiar place. He always frequent because he was welcome. He wasn't just welcome to the town. He wasn't just welcome to the city. But he was welcome to someone's home who had faith in him as the master, as the Lord, amen, as the Messiah. He visited quite often. And when he visited, things happened. And what happened to the people of that community not only affected them, but every time Jesus was coming that way, their faith was triggered by the experiences they had before. Amen. 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 Somebody here today need to know that one of the reasons God has blessed us again to be in this place is because our faith ought to be triggered 
by what the Lord has done before. If he chooses not to do anything else for any of us, he should have already done enough for our faith to be physical. Amen. I didn't get up this morning, amen, to get dressed to just come here and look at you and you look at me. I came today to support Pastor Davis. I came today because Pastor Davis asked me to do something that 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 it, it, it may even have been uncomfortable for him when a pastor uh, has to consider being out of place from where he is assigned to be every Sunday for the people of God. That's not always comfortable. And for him to have convictions in my faith, for him to trust my faith enough to say, man, would you come and preach to the people that I'm responsible for? It triggered something in me. And amen. And since he invited me and I, I talked to him yesterday and found out he was still here. If he would have said, I'm back home and I'm going to go on, I would have still been here because I wanted to support him. I wish somebody would hear me. Amen. Because I was moved by what he offered uh, me to do on his behalf. Amen. Somebody missing that. Amen. Amen. You, you know, anybody can be invited. When you get invited, you ought to find something to be blessed about that. Amen. And so it's a blessing that we're here today. But listen, we're not here today because we've been so good. We're not here because we crossed all our T's and dotted our I's and because we've been so great and so right in the sight of God. God has blessed us, amen, to be here on this third Sunday, amen, and our faith ought to be triggered by that because you do know the scripture says every morning God grants us with new mercies, amen, every morning God is proving Amen. His faithfulness. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad God works the night shift. Amen. I'm glad that while I slumbered and slept in the very image of death, why uh, the devil was creeping and crawling last night, you do know some folk didn't wake up this morning. You do know some folks' bed was their cooling board. It became their uh, their plank. It became the, uh, the transportation to the mark. But God touched you. He touched me. He touched us this morning. And you and I, faith ought to be triggered this morning to tell God, thank you. Not only did he wake us up, but then he helped us to get up. Some of y'all ain't moved yet. Amen. I thank God. And you do know you can wake up and not know your name. You do know you can wake up and not know where you are. You do know, amen, there are moments I can remember waking up and I was just lost. And I had to just lay there and say, oh, Lord. And just quicker than quick, he brought my mind and I knew the ceiling was above me and the floor was beneath me. He walked me up and then he gave me strength to get up. I'm old enough to know now what the old folk used to say. You better thank God for getting you up. And you better thank God for waking you up. And some of y'all ain't responding to that, but keep living. Amen. Sometimes you'll find yourself waking up and offer slept next to you and you didn't even invite him in the bed. That's all for writers, y'all. Amen. And you find yourself hurting and can't move and can't get. But anybody here know that God is a doctor even before you get out of bed? God is a deliverer before he wake you up in the morning. And so if you don't have nothing else to thank God for, your faith ought to be triggered this morning just to tell God thank you. Thank you, Lord. I went uh, early this morning to the church to assist Pastor Rose and got the building open and got things prepped for Sunday school on my way I'm in a hurry to get to New Beginnings. So much so I brought my breakfast with me from over there and went to the back, sat with Pastor and ate my breakfast. Thank you, Lord, for letting me know I was eating breakfast and I could feed myself. Some of y'all ain't with it yet. Amen. I work with hospice care and I see folk having to be woke up and have to be turned over, have to be propped up, have to be bathed, have to be clothed, have to be fed. I wish somebody hear me. And you sitting up here with your selfish self and you fed yourself this morning. You cooked your own food this morning. You tasted the eggs and the bacon. And you knew the difference between juice and water. You know the difference between your eggs. Amen. Real eggs and powdered eggs. You ought to tell God thank you. That you can chew your food up. Nobody got to puree your food for you and pour it in a tube.
to go down in your summer. I'm just wondering, anybody faith tricking yet to tell God thank you? Thank you. God's been good to us. Just overnight. Amen. When I look at this pericope in this second chapter of Mark, I get excited. I get excited because I can remember how much a fool I act for the devil. Amen. And when the devil told me to go out at night and stay out all night, I took a suitcase with me because I didn't know where I was going to end up when I was lost. Some of y'all looking funny at me. You, you ain't always been in church all your life either. Amen. You lived another life. But how you know, Reverend, if you say you saved, then that means you've been saved from something. I ain't say something. I said something. You've been saved. And if you saved, you know what God saved you from. I thank God he saved me from the world. And you think after God saved me, I'm going to get up when he wake me up with less enthusiasm? No. I'm going to get up thanking God for how he's blessed me with purpose to wake up and go to church. Right. And when you read the second chapter, Jesus had frequent this community. He frequent this town named Capernaum. And when he was on his way, they were motivated. Their faith was triggered. They were motivated. Anybody was motivated this morning? Anybody was excited? Amen. I thank God for the music instructor at my home church. When I sung in the choir, she told us, don't wait till you get to church to start humming and warming your voice. She said, when you wake up in the morning and you start thinking about the goodness of Jesus and you're trying to get dressed to come to church, you ought to have a song to hum while you're getting dressed. Amen. She said you ought to have a song to hum while you're eating breakfast. I wish I had a witness here. She said so when you get to church to be a part of worship, your thoughts will already be warm. Talk back to me somebody. Amen. Amen. Thank God for this morning's wake up. But then I want to thank God for the opportunity to hum to his name. These folk were excited in this chapter. They, they were excited. How you know, Reverend? Because it says when he returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was home, that he was in the home that he frequented. And they were excited about it. Another scripture says that it was noise. It was talked about, amen, because Jesus made a difference in these people's lives in Capernaum so much so that when they knew he was on his way back, they start telling folk. They start spreading the word saying, listen, Jesus is on his way. Yes, sir. And they weren't just spreading the word to anybody. They were spreading the word to people who who they thought that Jesus can make a difference in their life. Yes, because he had made a difference in their life. Can I get a witness? I don't know about you, but I've been saved. And I thank God for these 30, uh, 40 years of being saved and delivered from my addiction of 12 years. Amen. From 12 to 22. And I don't just go talk to people who are already saved about Jesus. I like going back talking to my old getting high buddies. I like, see, I like seeing them and letting them see me so I can say, I still got room in the car if you want to come go to church with me. Amen. I want you to experience because, you know, they see you and they say, man, look like you got it going on. I said, I do in the name of Jesus. Amen. And they, man, look like you blessed. I am in the name of Jesus. But I want you to know that he ain't limited. Amen. He can bless you just like he blessed me. Amen. Matter of fact, let me bless you by getting you up early enough so you can come to Sunday school and stay all day with me in worship. If you think Sunday school is something, wait till we get to worship when Sister Davis is singing and Pastor Davis is singing and that man is picking that guitar. Amen. You pat your feet in the world. I want to invite you somewhere where you can pat your foot and your soul. I wish I had somebody understand what I'm trying to say. Amen. And I like uh, amen in the second chapter of Mark how it appears that they were excited. Their faith was moved because of the frequency of Jesus' coming to their community that they reported it to the community that Jesus is coming again. 
Jesus is coming back. And I want you to experience what I've experienced. The Bible says that when Jesus got to the house of those who he was visiting, their faith was already activated. I'm just trying to tell you what can happen, amen, when your faith is full in the face of Jesus, that you get excited because you know he going to do something. You do know, don't you know, he going to make a difference. Because when you face him, he made a difference in your life. Listen, ever since I met Jesus, I've never been the same. And every time I come before his presence, I am not the same. I wish I had somebody, amen, walking with me. Look like, look like y'all going to be a hard crowd to preach to, but I'm going to preach anyway, amen. Because I come off the streets of third wall, and I learned how to do something if nobody was around. Amen, amen. And so I thank God for the opportunity that I can come before his presence. Even though I'm saved, he still can deposit something in my spirit. Amen. 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 I never go to the grocery store and don't come out with groceries. I never go to the gas station. And don't leave with some gas. I wish somebody hear me. Amen. I never, I never go to Lewis and don't get me some vegetables. I wish I had a witness. I never ride on a plane and don't try to get first class. Amen. Amen. And so I'm never going to come to church and don't look for a blessing. I'm never expected to come before the presence of God and my faith is not activated to say, Lord, bless me. Yes, bless me, Lord. Any way you bless me, Lord, yes. I'll be satisfied. Yes, yes, Anybody here know that? Amen. Anybody country enough to know that if you bless, you ought to thank God for however yes. he bless you because however he bless you, it is a blessing. Yes, sir. Can I get a witness? Amen. These folk were anxious. They were excited. They were ready to see Jesus. Their faith was triggered. Their faith was full. So much so that they went and found a paralytic brother. Yes, sir. They found a brother like a brother. Yes, sir. You know that's what we ought to be doing. We who have faith in the Lord, we ought to be looking for a brother. A brother. Yes, sir. To bring and introduce them to a brother. Yes, sir. Which I had a witness here. Amen. Amen. I never shall forget when the Lord called me to preach. I called a family meeting with my brothers. There's four of us. Uh, and uh, uh, they all sat, you know, and, and was looking at me because they knew well, where I had been and what I had been doing. And I'm the third boy of four. And uh, I did not live to please my mother and father in such a way that I was embarrassing the family. And so when God used that year to save me, he didn't need a whole year, but he saved me one year. I had been in church all my life. I had been coming to church high. I had been singing in the choir high. I had been getting high with church members. I had been going to parties with church members. But when I came to myself, I had lost my, my career in the Marine Corps. I had lost my family behind my addiction. And when God saved me, I was excited about my salvation. I was excited about the fact that he can save me. And I can still get high, but don't have to get on nothing. Somebody get that. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord, that I don't have to put nothing in me because when you save me, you put something in me. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I got a Holy Ghost high. And this high, you don't have to get a hangover afterwards. Amen. This high, I'm high now. Y'all can't tell. Amen. Because this Holy Ghost is, is invisible. I wish I had a witness here. And just speaking about the goodness of God is is, is getting high. I told my family, look, God saved me. Now he done called me to preach. Well, they say, <laughs> My mama walked out, went to the kitchen, acted like she was doing something in the kitchen. Uh -huh. I went and I said, Mama, you, you left and you ain't said nothing. She said, Boy, don't, don't play with God. All right. Uh -huh. <laughs> she ended up making noise with the pasta. I said, Mama, I'm trying to tell you what God told me, but God had already prepped me. Yes, sir. Sister David. Yes, sir. He had already prepped me. I had been in, I think, seven days of revival 
with some people and through that revival, God had spoken my spirit to tell me yes, what he was going to do and told me how my family was going to react to it and told me, don't worry about it. I've got you. And so when I told my mom, them, they didn't want to hear it. One of my brothers said to me, he's an intellectual. He's my oldest of the four. He calls himself an intellectual. Anyway, and he says, well, if that's the new career that you so choose to do, then be at it. I say, no, no, it's not a career that I chose. It's the Lord's choosing of me. He revealed to me that my purpose for being born was to preach. I wish somebody hit it. I found it out late, but it wasn't too late in the name of the Lord. The devil tried to kill me a whole lot of times, but thank God that he couldn't. Amen. Amen. And so I heard him. Amen. And then my second brother. Amen. Uh, he said, like the world needs another bootleg preacher. Lord have mercy. I tell you what, if I wasn't sure about my salvation, I would not have been sure about my calling. And I would have went right back where he saved me from. But I thank God that when faith is full, it's also sure. Anybody walking with me? My youngest brother say, well, you know, okay. If you say it, then do it. I say, thank you, little brother. And I've been doing it ever since. I'm just sharing my testimony so you size me up and get out of that and get in your own worship and hear this message. I wish you'd hear me. Amen. In this text, these folks were so affected and infected by Jesus' frequency of coming that way, their lives were changed so much so that they sought out a man who was crippled, amen, and they told him, you need to see Jesus. We heard your situation, we know your circumstances, we understand, we've been knowing you in the neighborhood for a while, and we want to get you to Jesus because we believe that Jesus can make the difference in your life. Amen. Amen. Evidently, the man agreed. Evidently, he agreed because the Bible says that while Jesus was in the home there, worshiping there at someone's home and sharing the word of God, the Bible said that these four men picked this man up on his bed and carried him. Yes, sir carried him. Yes, you got to see something in this. Yeah. These four men, sure, amen, sure. was of one accord in their faith. When faith is full in the face of Jesus, it becomes united. Yeah. I was about hearing. They picked this man up on his bed. They put a rope on his bed so that they can pick him up Amen. In unity. Because you know if there is four people carrying a bed, if one person uh, chooses to not carry his weight, the man is going to flip. Y'all ain't getting this. Amen. Uh, I, what am I saying? I'm saying we who have faith, our faith needs to be full and confident in the Lord that when we choose to witness and win people to bring them to Christ, we can't pick them up any kind of way. We can't pick them up weak. We can't pick them up weary. We got to pick them up with a balance in our own faith so that we can bring them the right way to Jesus. You see, you and I can't do in some of our friends' lives what Jesus can do. I wish I had a witness here. I was saved and delivered and my process was at the church. I didn't never went to a, a rehab. I never went to a 12-step program. My program was the church. My home church in Third War had something going on every day, and that was my place of refuge. I could go there, and even though it was women ministry on a certain day, guess what the women said? Come on in here. 
I needed to go to the church because if I didn't go to the church, I probably would have ended up at the dope house or the whole house. And so I went to the church and so I could be in a safe place where I was welcome and not judged and not criticized. Y'all looking at me all funny. Amen. I'm trying to tell you, I'm standing before you, not the same man as I once was. You beat Reverend Silverate, but I ain't always been in the pulpit. I ain't always carried a Bible. And you sitting here ought to know that Jesus can save to the utmost. These brothers faith were so full in the face of Jesus that the Bible doesn't tell us how far they carried him, but it does tell us that they carried him. You and I must understand that there are some individuals that we need to carry. It, it ain't enough to invite them. If you're going to be late to church, be late because you're picking somebody up to bring them to church. Be late to church because you're, you're doing ministry on the way to the church. Talk back to me, somebody. Amen. They carried him. The Bible say when they got there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When they got there, they had, they had faith of good intention. Yes, sir. And when they got there, with the man, the house was packed. It was so crowded. Even at the door, they could not get in. Let me quickly tell you, when you read this pericope, you will notice that these brothers' intentions were not to just get him to the church house. The intentions was not to just get him to the home. But the invitation of the intention was to get their friend to Jesus. My brothers and sisters, when your faith is full of good intentions, then your faith will be moved by good inventions. Somebody gonna get this in. The house was packed. They couldn't get in. Folk didn't want to move. You know how folk is. They sit on, on the end of the pew and don't want to move down. Don't want to move down and let somebody else sit down. Listen, amen. If you part of the house, anywhere you sit ought to be good. But when you got a new soul showing up, you ought to accommodate them. You ought to make them feel comfortable. Can I get a witness? You ever had somebody invite you over to their house? And they say, come in and say, sit down. And then when you go to sit and they say, they say, oh, not right there. That's my seat. <laughs> well, if your seat's so good, you ought to let them sit in. I wish I had a witness here. Because the fact is, you own all the seats in the house. Amen. Amen. They tried to get this man in. And the Bible says, I really like this. I really like this. I really like this idea. Because when you and I, amen, know the Lord in the part of our sin and our faith is activated and our faith is functioning full in the face of Jesus, amen, uh, you always are, are prepared to do what is necessary. Somebody missing that. To worship God. Can I get a witness? I just mentioned to you when I was lost, I used to bring clothes. If I take you out to my car, I got some clothes in the car. If I brought clothes when I was lost, going out in the world, staying out all night, you think I ain't gonna bring no clothes when I'm going to church? Amen. And you never know what the Lord might need. While the people of God are acting worshiping, I might need to go help Pastor fix the air condition. Some of y'all gonna say amen to that. Amen. You never know what the Lord needs you to do. You never know what your assignment is on Sunday morning or when you're in the face of Jesus. Amen. These boys evidently brought their tools with them. I say they had their tools with them. Amen. I, I, I normally will, will use this uh, to say uh, they must have been of a other ethnicity. Because when we come to church, we so dressed up, don't ask me to no trash yeah. I'm, I'm here today to have church. Don't, don't, don't ask me to run and sew and give up. Run, you, you ain't know you needed that before you got here. Don't ask me to do nothing. All I want to do 
and come to church, find my seat, sit in my corner, mind my own business, and have me some worship. But do you know that worship is participatory? Yes, Somebody listen. I didn't just come here to hear Sister Davis sing. I was singing with her. I wish I knew how to pick that guitar. I would have went over there and took it from that brother and told him to show you how to pick that thing. I like to get involved. I don't know about you. Amen. But when I was lost, I got involved with whatever was going on. Talk back to me, some of you church folk. Amen. I can remember crashing, amen, house parties. Anybody in here not too saved and don't mind saying that they used to go to house parties? I, I didn't even have to have an invitation. If I just heard it was a house party, I would go there like I was invited. Because I knew how to slip in. And all you have to do is listen to the music and bounce your way in the door. I wish somebody hear me. Got a party going on in the music and that party over here. And they'll open the door and let you in and you bounce your way right over where the liquor at. Amen. Get close to where the DJ at and then give him a song that you want to hear. Like you deserve to be there. And you thank God that God has saved me from that kind of life. I'm going to come to church and act like I don't know how to get in God with the worship. These boys wanted to get Jesus, young man into the presence of Jesus. Their invitation was not to just get him in the house. For their invitation of faith was moved by their invention. The Bible says that evidently they inspected the house and knew that the roof was a vulnerable place to be able to get the man in the front of Jesus. I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm glad for this second chapter. Because I want to believe that my mama and daddy did whatever was necessary to get me in the face of Jesus. I never shall forget how many church folk told my mama, once a dope addict, always a dope addict. Some church folk told my mama, that boy is gonna hurt you. Because now he's a danger to society. They told my mama that you ought to get rid of him. Because he's gonna bring harm to your family. But I'm glad that my mama didn't just listen to church folk. But I'm glad that my mama kept going to church and she kept sliding around in her seats until she was able to sit by somebody in church that had faith in the face of Jesus. And I never shall forget that old lady telling my mama, don't you listen to what them folk telling you. As long as you got a chance, bring your son to church. And as long as you got a chance, present your child before Jesus. And I don't know about anybody else, but I'm glad, amen, that that old lady, faith was activated. And she told my mama that she had double the children that my mama had. And she told my mama that she gave all of her children to the Lord. And the Lord saved all of her children. And she told my mama, I don't know when, but I do know God can. I don't know how, but I do know God got the power. Is there anybody listening to me that believe that if your faith is activated in the face of Jesus, it can not only bless you, 
but it will also bless somebody else. And I'm glad that my mama listened to that old lady. And that time that I would wake up in the middle of the night, and my mama would be standing over me. And I thought that my mama was about to beat me in the midnight hour. But I'm glad that that old lady told her, you got to learn how to lay your hands on your child and pray for them in the midnight hour of the day. Can I get a witness? And I'm glad that mama's prayers paid off. Can I get a witness? The Bible says in Mark the second chapter that these brothers Climbed on the roof and tore back the roof. Can I get a witness? Their faith was so activated in the face of Jesus because they can imagine what would happen to the man if they got him before Jesus. And the Bible says that they were in unison. To horse the man down from the roof. Can't you see Jesus? Yeah, looking up while he's preaching to the crowd. Can I get who in there? I'm glad that that's in the text because so many times people think that their circumstances are the interrupt. But if your worship, uh, if your interruption uh, is not going to give glory to Jesus, uh, then you need to sit down and be still. But I'm glad that they were up there for the glory of God. And they were letting the man down. By faith, uh, they were horsing him down. By faith. They were letting him down by faith. They were releasing the rope to let the man down before the presence of Jesus. And the Bible says that when Jesus looked up and saw their faith, he did not see the faith of the crippled man. But Jesus looked at the faith of those who are already affected by who he is. I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm glad. I said I'm glad to be affected by the power of God. I'm glad. I'm so glad that my life is not the same. Can you say it? Yeah. And Jesus uh, was looking at their faith uh, and he responded uh, to their faith. Uh, you do know the faith here, don't you? Faith uh, is trusting God. Faith is confidence in his son. Faith uh, is giving all that you're doing for uh, to the Lord. For the Lord's strength, faith is turning over in surrenderance. What the Lord can do for you, can you say yeah? Faith moves these boys that they went to work because they believed that faith without works is dead, and works without favor. Look at their faith, and the Bible says that Jesus chooses to forgive this man of his sins. Right there in the midst of worship, Jesus performed a miracle on the man's soul. And just like right now, the devil is sitting up here. Convincing some of y'all don't respond.
turn to the word of God. There were some folk sitting in the house, but they wasn't in the worship. They were sitting there criticizing. They were sitting there talking under their breath. They were sitting there not believing what Jesus could do. And Jesus knew their hearts and knew their thoughts. Yeah. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. The things can happen when your faith is full in the face of Jesus. The question then becomes, why am I not experiencing more? Well, it might be you need to check your faith level. When your power stirring on your car is running low, your car make noise. I wish I had somebody. When your water level in your car is low, something bleeps in your dashboard. When your battery is running low in your cell phone, your bars start going down. And there ought to be a sensor in your soul. Why is there not anything happening around me? I told a friend of mine the other week that God was blessing my business and one of my customers gave me a vehicle. I was blessed from my brother with the first vehicle and now a customer gave me a vehicle and on my blackboard at my office I asked God for six vehicles to serve the Houston area. And now it's just June, and God had already blessed me with two. I'm talking about an active faith, a faith that believes God. And I told him that, in, and he's on the north side, and he's trying to run a business and have no transportation. And three days later, he called me seven times in a row. And he never calls me seven times in a row. Because I don't never answer no seven times in a row phone call. I finally called him back and he said, man, you don't never take this long to answer the phone. Why you took so long? I said, I'm busy, man. What's, what's going on? He said, I can't hold it no longer. I talked to you three days ago, and you told me to put my faith to work, and a customer came over here because I couldn't deliver the tamales to them, and they're at a health care home, and the lady got somebody to drive her to my tamale shop, and then she asked me to drive her back home, and I didn't understand it, and I drove her back to the home that she lives in with five other people, and she told me she got four cars sitting in her driveway, and she can't drive none of them, and she told me to take the car that I drove her back home in, and keep it for herself, for myself, to run my business, and I wanted to get you on the phone so I could tell you your faith triggered my faith and God has responded. <laughs> the doors of the church are open. That might be somebody here today. I don't know who you are. I don't know why God wanted me to preach that message. My sister Davis and the ministers of music will bless us. I don't know who you are, but I know God talking to you. I don't know who you are. God has proven himself to you, but yet you have not responded in your faith to him. God has shown you he can save you, that he can keep you. But brothers and sisters, it's not enough for us to be saved and then become selfish. Our faith in what the Lord has done for us, to us, needs to be a faith that lets Him do something through us. And there's somebody standing in the need of the Lord Jesus Christ as a Savior. And you won't witness. You won't tell them. You won't talk to them. You won't share with them because you're, you're shy and you're ashamed. The Bible says, Jesus says, if you're ashamed to own me before men, I will be ashamed to own you before my Father. Listen, I don't ever want to be ashamed of what Jesus saved me from. 
I'll share with you just some of my testimonies as the Holy Spirit gave me unction. If you chose to hear those testimonies for them to bless you, blessed you are. If you chose to hear those testimonies to judge me, then you got to deal with your own judgment. All God was trying to do was tell you and show you that he can save anybody. anybody. He can save from the guttermost to the uttermost. And you ain't no better than me and I ain't no better than you. No matter what side of the track you was on, we were all sinners needing to be saved. So that message to you today is that you don't have to hesitate. The Bible says if you just have faith, the simple size of a mustard seed, just enough to trust the Lord, just enough to try the Lord. You don't have to see him, you don't have to track him to trust him. Just believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth. Believe in your heart that God had raised his son from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You don't have to flip over pews. You don't have to foam at the mouth. You don't have to speak in tongues. The Bible says all you have to do is believe. Believe in what God done and what Jesus demonstrated that he thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made of himself of no reputation and took on the form and the likeness of a man who became obedient, even obedient unto the cross, that Jesus died for your sins so you could be saved, so you can have a new beginning, a new life. This is a good church, the New Beginning Church. This is a wonderful pastor. If you're without a church home and you're hearing us over the medium or you're in this sanctuary and you're not a part of any ministry, I encourage you that in this second chapter of Mark, you can be included to be one of those that have been infected and affected by Jesus, that you become a part of the working team to bring souls to the Lord. This is your day. This is your hour. The Bible says, harden not your heart. The day you hear my voice, the day you hear his word, your heart should become penetratable. That the word will take residence as a seed that it will take root and will grow in your heart. So much yourself that you want to spurt it out. You want to burst it out. I believe, preacher. I want Jesus to be my Lord. I want him to be my Savior. Amen, amen. Let's turn it back over to the pastor. Bless you, Pastor David. seen, what you have just heard, is a pupil instructing the professor. Brother Miles, I said, what you have just seen, what you have just heard, is the pupil instructing the professor. He was hallelujah to the sound and I'm going to let it be correct. Yeah. Won't we thank the Lord for this man of God? Yeah. As he was preaching, I was preaching so hard, I'm hoarse now. Yeah. Thank you, Reverend Silverman, for, for blessing us, for keeping us, for, for encouraging us. And man, you preached it all, man. I mean, you preached it all. You left no meat on that bone. Thank you so much for, for enlightening us on our faith. Thank you so much. 
to you, please say all. If you can agree with me that he preached a, a solid message that we need, why don't you stand to your feet and, and let's celebrate what God has done. What God has done with, with this man. God has, has visited us today, has made himself known, has made himself known today. We thank God. We thank God for for this word, this word of God. We thank God. We thank God for that. Someone ought to be encouraged today to be faithful to God and have their faith in God activated. He told us that Jesus was faithful and we ought to be faithful. So thank you again. Thank you for, for what you have done for us today. Hallelujah to It is now offering time. It is time to give to the Lord. It is offering time. It is time for us to praise the Lord through giving as God has blessed us. God has tremendously blessed us. We want to bless the Lord. If you need honor, Lord, raise your hand real high. Raise your hand real high. And, uh, and you will be served. If you need honor, Lord, raise your hand. And you will, you will be served. If you need an please, ma'am, please, sir, raise your hand. And you will be served. He preaches his keys right out of his pocket. He preaches his keys right out, right flat out of his pocket. And never miss the key.
doing our daily Bible listening and our daily prayer reading, our daily Bible reading for the, the, uh, the daily Bible study reading. I won't ask you to raise your hand because it may be a little unfair to most of you. Uh, please, ma'am, please, sir, catch up with your daily Bible listening and your journaling, your daily Bible listening and journaling. And also, go ahead and, and catch up with your daily Bible reading that I send out uh, every uh, Monday morning, usually. Uh, please catch up. That daily Bible reading prepares you for Sunday morning, uh, Sunday school. And our Sunday school teachers are just delighted when you uh, are prepared when you come to Sunday school. It won't sound, I got at least two A hands here. Now, Sunday school teachers are delighted when you prepare uh, for Sunday, for Sunday school. Amen. Also, the daily Bible we, we, uh, listening, we are listening through the Bible. Uh, we have people all over the world listening along with us. Uh, my mother-in-law wanted us to know that she's caught up with her daily Bible listening. My mama wanted us to know that she's caught up with our daily Bible reading. So ma'am, sir, please catch up. Other folk that are not members of your church are caught up, so come on, catch up. I don't care how far you are behind. The preacher said, have faith, have faith. That's right. <laughs> and God will bless you, amen. Amen, we'll ask our speaker to come back and, uh, and lead us into our benediction. Would you stand, please? God bless you. We certainly pray that the Lord had allowed us to say something to motivate, to encourage you, give you some inspiration in your daily faith walk. It is a wonderful thing to be people of faith. God looks to use those who have faith to invite, to encourage, and to bring others before his son our savior pastor davis thank you lord thank you thank you for this worship experience lord thank you for your holy spirit sealing us in this place giving us an ear to hear and a heart to receive now, as we come down off this mountain, back into the valleys of our realities, as we pass those who, who need some attention, as we encounter those who need a blessed word, help us not to be so in a hurry to get to some place to eat, that we pass up those who don't even have any food to eat. Help us. As we're in a hurry to get to our abode, our homes, our shelter, help us not to be in so a hurry that we pass those who are sleeping under the stars. Help us to apply our faith to encourage somebody to seek Jesus. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, may he rest, may he rule, and may he abide with us until we all meet again. And all the people of God said, Amen. Oh. Your custom. Yes, he has. Yes, he has.